And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Yasuo Karma. We're going to be playing a new take on a Yasuo deck uh, submitted by a viewer here. We have three viewers submitted donation decks again today. It's basically been donation deck week, right? Like we've had all viewer submitted donation decks. So this new format, tons of, tons of people are donating decks. It's pretty awesome. And uh, so yeah, so we've had a lot of um, crazy things we've been playing this week, a lot of really cool things, a lot of different stuff. And you know, we're gonna be playing Yasuo Karma today. And, and I don't know if I've really played too much Yasuo Karma ever, even though these are two champions that were in the very first um, expansion for Legends of Runeterra. And they're two uh, champions in the same region, but I still don't think I've really played too much of them together. So we're pairing them with Noxus, because Noxus has uh, some good stuff for Yasuo. Of course, the best probably being like Arachnoid Sentry, being a nice stun card. Um, so we're going to have our stun stuff paired with Ravenous Flocks. We'll, you know, we'll have our Steel Tempest, our Sentry, our Concussive Palm. Um, and then, of course, Minotaur Reckoner, stunning the weakest enemy every round. That's amazing with Yasuo. Our Intimidating Roar, stunning all that kind of stuff. And we're going to have some top end with Captain Farron. I really like how... Uh, we can have this nice top end card in this kind of deck. So Karma is going to be in here being able to double up our spells and also just be a, an amazing um, late game card. Because you know how like with Yasuo decks, you, you always like try to th try to think of like, how do you win games when you don't have Yasuo? That's always the big question with Yasuo decks. And Karma and Captain Farron are both two very powerful cards that can uh, win games on their own. As far as combining them together... Um, you know, your stun cards are going to do double stun whenever you have Karma in play. So if they double stun, then it should, you know, get uh, level up Yasuo faster and then and double strike, you know, do two damage twice. Um, you know, so that, that's how it should be. But not all of them, like like Sentry, right? Like that doesn't double up with Karma because that's a unit. Steel Tempest, stun an attacking enemy. So it has to be attacking. So once your first one stuns it, it's not attacking anymore. So the second one won't stun it. Um, but I guess that, that works with Concussive Palm, though. If, uh, you know, like, you just do something in the back row, you can double Concussive Palm. Um, so I guess that's the main one that that's going to work with. Because, uh, yeah, you can't double Recall with Will of Ionia. All right, so let's see how we do. You know, like, Scorcher's in here to destroy some landmarks. House Spire gets some early blockers. You know, Blade Twirler doing its thing. It's all cool and stuff. Um, get some good lifesteal in here to try to get to the late game because we have our late game with Karma and, uh, you know, Yasuo, Karma, Captain Farron. So here we go. We're gonna go play some games in ranked and just kind of test this one out. <laughs> no, yeah, I just, I just casually start wearing a, a t-shirt and tie before streaming. Yeah, it's, it's early in the morning for me here. This is like my, my day job. Um, I'm not, yeah, I'm not coming home from work right now. This is, this is my work. Um, I just like to look professional. You know, I, I, uh, I think I kind of look better in a dress shirt and a tie than just in a t-shirt. Let's see. We're going to mulligan and keep, I don't know. I guess I could keep karma. Sure. Let's do it. So like, they're going to be, you know, like Draven Ezreal, they can be aggressive, but they're also like a more controlly type deck. And I hope that they have a slower hand as well and not necessarily an aggressive hand. Because I'm going to just keep the, the Yasuo with the two cards that go well with Yasuo. And then I already, so I already have stuff for like the first few turns with all these. So I decided to keep the Karma as well. And looks like we are uh, drawing our champions pretty good. And they did have the slower hand, which is nice. I'm going to wait to play Yasuo until I have, you know, these cards, like Deny and Spirit's Refuge available. But yeah, they're going to have a ton of removal, so um, don't be surprised if we have some dead champions here in a bit. So of course they they have ravenous flock. That's that's the plan here. Static shock ravenous flock. I'm gonna keep them from getting that, uh, you know, one damage in, and then um, 
and drawing a card. Right, so like that deny keeps them from drawing the card, so that's pretty nice. Okay, that card's good. I wish I had one more mana. I wish I could go Yasuo and Concussive Palm and Twin Disciplines. I guess I can go Yasuo Steel Tempest Twin Disciplines. Death is like the wind, always by my side. The House Spider draw for them was really good. I, you know, like we are we are also playing House Spider. That would have been nice to have House Spider ourselves. Yeah, you can tell they're gonna they're gonna ravenous flock to kill that. Oh, I'm sorry, Jack. Yeah, I forgot to set up the prediction. First game today. Sorry, I'll try to remember that for the next one. Help remind me. The problem with playing this Captain Farron here is that I, I am going to burn my next top card. Yeah, unfortunately, they had the same thing. Come on, the top card was Captain Farron. That's not cool. The biggest thing we've seen this game of like the reason why my opponent is doing better than me is basically been just the cost of spells. They've they've just had a lot cheaper cards. They've had a lot of three mana cards. They've had like one mana ravenous flock, the two mana house spider. Right? They just had a lot more cheap cards than what I have had, and that has been the the biggest difference so far. Has been mana efficiency. So you you've noticed they've been able to unload their hand more. Right, like I just burned that Captain Farron because I just haven't been able to play. They've just played a lot more cards. And the strength of our cards have been basically the same. Um, but they've been unloading them a lot faster. Well, that's, that's pretty nice. Lies within. I did. I did. I didn't. That's true. The cards I kept in my hand in the beginning of the mulligan weren't necessarily the cheapest cards. That's fair. Um, it's not really the next two months that Grand Plaza will be untouched. It's basically the it's like five weeks from now. So just a little over a month. Lots of decimates running around these these parts. 
Oh, I can't really stop that. Um, let's see, inside of, let's see, three, six, nine, ten. Inside of Ages probably isn't the best play. This is probably me dying. Alright, there we go. Alright, so one. Yes, yeah, so we had some cards that didn't look so good. Um, but, you know, like, they, they just had, like, much better interaction than we did. I guess I need a mulligan more for, like, our. Yeah, maybe I need a mulligan more and look for our house spiders and ravenous flocks and, and things like that. Those are gonna be two really strong cards house spider, ravenous flock. They had those kind of cards. Um. So Sejuani, Timo. I mean, I could see maybe keeping the spider. That this may be, end up being a problem. Games that we don't have House Spider and Ravenous Flock and Fae Blade Twirler. Our curve is incredibly high, so that that, that may end up being the problem here. Yeah, this this could be a problem. Nothing like the great outdoors. System upgrade. Rise, metal brethren. Yeah, they. I I agree. There's definitely some awkwardness to the Yasuo Karma combination. They're both slow late game cards that are also very vulnerable to removal Three with two e's. that you also need to keep in play that also can't block some some awkward awkwardness and tension between all those for sure Yeah, I've always liked this Teemo Sejuani deck. It's it's a very fun deck to play. Doesn't always work, but whenever it works, it's and whenever you win games, it's uh, very satisfying. Our cards cost too much mana. Like, we're getting out aggroed by this deck. <laughs> How, can you, is it even possible? But the thing is, is like, what. How would we even change that with. With Yasuo and Karma and Nox? Like, what, what would we even do to change that? I'm not sure. So, I'd like to play Minotaur Reckoner this turn, but I think I gotta go Concussive Palm, Will of Ionia.
The Winter's Claw endures! Pain is nothing. Ride onward! Destiny awaits. Recall that, and it's just too much damage if I, I want to stun the Teemo, but it's kind of too much damage. I need to stun this Nandroid. Yeah, because I can't, I can't really go to five. So I would have stunned the Nandroid first, then I would have had a blocker for the Starlet Seer with the 3 2. I guess I should be going the other way around on both of those. Putting the Nandroid back. I put the Sejuani back in the hand because it costs so much mana. But I guess I could have you know, used the Scorch Earth to kill the Sejuani and reset. Old Android. I will bleed. Rough technique. Good results. Carved from the savage cold. Which will work out just fine. You know, like we'll have eight mana next turn. I'll be able to put Sejuani back in their hand again. Scorched Earth and Android. Um, hopefully, you know, I kill like the Teemo at the beginning of turn. We'll round start. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a big fan of the prismatic look either. Um, but Starlet Seer does look. Yeah, as far as the prismatic prismatics go, Starlet Seer does look pretty good. All right. So, recall. Scorched Earth. Your attack is obvious. Block. Block. We'll see if this works. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. Basically, kind of playing these games, it doesn't feel as if. All right, so that Mystic Shot's gonna frostbite my stuff. The journey doesn't get you the road, It doesn't really feel as if the. Um, as if the. Sorry, I was trying to think of what I was. Saying. I was thinking about what I was doing, but anyway. So it doesn't feel it doesn't really feel as if karma adds very much. Like my stuff's gonna keep getting frostbitten until the end of the game. So as far as healing my Nexus, this may be my last chance to do that. One blade, one purpose. Fly away while you can. So I think I kind of have to do that just to heal my Nexus for four. You own what you take. They will bleed. Rough technique. Good results. Safety disengaged. Fire till nothing moves. So now with Yasuo leveled up, Yasuo is going to be striking enemies, dealing five. But of course, Yasuo is going to be um, frostbitten quite a bit as well. So not the best combination. That Steel Tempest draw was amazing, though. That was a great draw for us. Work. Fast strikes. Don't let the fluffy tails fool you. 
But you know, now, now like, stunning will do two damage. It won't, or like, stunning will, will do zero damage because Yasuo's power is zero. Oh, it's on. Lies within. That was a pretty good attack around Steel Tempest. If they would attack with both, we had Steel Tempest one, and then you know pump up our thing and be able to kill the Starless here. Dang, all this Nexus damage. An auspicious season. Wow. All right. Well. This would be a good I guess. I guess they got all that. Okay, Team of Fizz. This would be a deck with elusives. Our Intimidating Roar with Yasuo could be awesome if we have a Yasuo. Um, so I'm going to keep that. That could that could be pretty awesome in this matchup. But of course, we need to draw Yasuo. <laughs> yeah, why does Riot keep making OP burn cards? I don't know, that Aftershock card's, yeah, that Aftershock card's pretty great, because, you know, it's just a landmark removal spell is necessary. Alright, so this is going to be our first game where we actually play something before turn four. Pick on someone your own speed. Turn four was the earliest we played something previously. We got Yasuo. This could be pretty good. This is lining up. This is lining up to be very good for us. Um, we're going to take one more attack for a lot of damage. Oh, they didn't have anything to play that turn. So maybe not that much damage. Let me just do this right now. Yeah, next turn Intimidating Roar. Should be a one-sided board wipe. That basically also levels up Yasuo and makes these things super large. I, I could have Steel Tempest also. I'll just save Steel Tempest. I think we're pretty fine here. We got the lifesteal barriers. I was too confident. I was too confident I should've just waited a turn because they already attacked anyway. Because if I waited a turn, I could have had the barrier. The problem is I have to do that... Oh, I guess I don't have to do that proactively. Never mind, I was thinking I had to do that proactively. But I guess I don't, because they have to block, because this is 18 damage. They can't just take it. Because I was thinking well, they could just take it if I don't do that. But they can't take it. That's 18. We're still doing just fine, though. Six. Hey, Mind Splitter. We'll bring peace to Ionia, whatever the cost. That's pretty nice. 
The purple fish created a one cost spell and then their draw step was pick a card which got to shuffle it back. I'm of course going to be playing the Spirit's Refuge this turn, so I don't don't have the ability to play Captain Farron as well. Because Captain Farron wouldn't kill them, kind of kill them. Hey, hey Nasher. Should be able to finish this out being uh, back up to 19. Like a fish in water. <laughs> this purple fish card is pretty good though. This card's definitely underrated. And I, I like that combo, the um, purple fish and a terrible to make more purple fishes. More purple fishies. It's a good combo. The combo of of um, a terrative improvement creating you know being creating more wiggly purple fish, and then you know it costs zero and then you just play, a, you know so this was a zero mana four two, um, four two elusive. That ghost could be useful as a blocker on these elusives. That could be useful. Could also be useful. Yeah, we, we played a Teemo Fizz the other day that was just like this. Um, on Monday, they had a lot of, like, they had basically all these same cards. I don't know if it's the exact same list or not. But there we go. There was our Teemo Fizz that we played just like this. Alright, that'll put them down to two. They'll have a Fizz left. Sounds good. I think this ghost is going to really save this game for us. Because they can't... They have to do stuff burst speed. They can't... Um, they can't allow me to have priority because we cast Decimate. So they have to like just play burst speed and, and pump up Fizz and attack. And hope that works. You know, like they basically have to hope they have enough pump for that. Okay, and they, they maybe just... Yeah, they don't have like two more pump. Okay. Ooh, this deck's probably a little bit better <laughs> than our last deck that we just played against. This one's probably a little bit better. All right, let's see what we got. Mulligan. The second Yasuo, the champion spell's pretty good, being two mana. It's gonna take a minute to get to it. I think I keep it though. Steel Tempest is like a card that can help us kind of catch up because, you know, like I said, it's only two mana. 
We're gonna need the cheaper cards. All right, yeah, prediction has started. Grand Plaza won't be nerfed until February 9th at the earliest. February 9th is going to be the balance patch change with the new cards. Burn away the shadows. Um, so yeah, so if you're hoping that Grand Plaza would be changed before that, unfortunately, it will not. Don't let the fluffy tails fool you. They have to. There's an article about it here. Any changes they decide to make with Grand Plaza, you know, they want to they want to see it in action for a little bit first. But Riot is currently on end of year holiday, and. Not exactly fair. <laughs> and so it for them changing in like app because of the Apple I the iTunes store, they require them like three or four weeks in advance or something like that. So um by the time they get back to work here in early January, then three or four weeks later, that's that's whenever the the next balance patch is, is scheduled. Oh, uh, let's see. For for that. There's there's still gonna be another balance patch update in, in January. But it's not going to be until February, until that one is scheduled. Follow the wind, but watch your back. This is mercy. Basically, keep Yasuo alive or kill Lucian, and I think we have to keep Yasuo alive. Here's our chance. To dance. That was kind of nice because then even, even if they would have had another sharp sight to keep the Lucian alive, then I would have been able to Ravenous block it. And now we'll be attacking back for 14 quick attack plus this 3 2. I guess they, they could have another sharp sight here. But yeah, they're just using that to gain 10 life. Another Yasuo Steel Tempest, good draw. Again, two mana, that's good. So I can go William and Yasuo and play both of those this turn. We had like a Nopeify for that. I'm going to open attack. Face me. Yeah. I'm hoping they, because I, like, I think they just block here and then they play Hecarim and then that's it. And then I play Minotaur Reckoner, which stuns the Hecarim immediately at the beginning of turn. Alright, well, I guess they'll play that. So if they, you know, they play Hecarim on their turn, I can still stun the Hecarim. 
So that still works. Now we'll have leveled up Yasuo. Maybe I do have a future. Now who's got the upper hand? I will last Hmm. Big blade for a little warrior. Underestimate me. I dare you. This has worked out pretty well. This Grand Plaza deck's really good, and they had an awesome hand. You know, like they had Bark Beast and Dilution into Grand Plaza, into like multiple of like the ephemeral cards that make all the challengers into Hecarim. Like that's a you know, and they had a Sharp Sight in there. They had a great hand. That's a really good win. I agree, Hamster. I think that uh, changing Plaza to be only dealing with the played units and not summoned units would be a good change. All right, Williams too expensive. Twin Disciplines probably too expensive. Uh, yeah, we're gonna need we're gonna need cheap cards here. The uh, yeah, we're just gonna need cheap cards. Let's mulligan those. Um, I would like the five mana stun all their cards. Um, Intimidating Roar. I would really like Intimidating Roar. If I could pick a card to draw. Think you're fast? Cute. Especially now that we have Yasuo. Come closer. I don't bite. Hush now. Wanna see these moves up close? Could go like the plus three plus zero. So young. Don't let the fluffy tails fool ya. Our decks looked pretty good when, I, when we've had like double oh, blade yeah. twirler early. That's been one of where we have been winning. Follow the wind and watch your back. Sounds like a threat. Blade never gets any lighter. It's just three damage. I think it's a free attack. But you never know, like a mark of the aisles here or there or something like that. You never know. This will shake him. Behind ya. Oh, it's on. Damn it. So I've leveled up Elise, which I can't stop. I mean, I guess I could, I could have killed the other spiders, I suppose. Beauty is beneath the skin. Yeah, I was thinking I can't kill Elise, so I couldn't stop it, but I guess I could have killed the other spiders. Okay, we got the old stun and ravenous flock combo with our Scorch Earth. I think that's Vile Feast. That's my guess. Same card. else to play this turn. What do they have in hand? Big blade for a little warrior. Underestimate me. I dare you.
Hey, what's up, Yohab? Uh, Yohab? Yohab. Welcome to the channel. That card's pretty good. I think I'm just gonna do that and take seven. I think I'm okay taking seven, especially having the deny backup for, you know, decimates and burn spells and stuff like that. Yeah, so the question is, is Riven a good card? And um, yes, I think Riven is a good card. I think the problem with Riven, the biggest problem with Riven, because, um, you know, it's, it's three mana, three, four that, that does, you know, generates cards for you, like creates cards for you. It's good. The problem with Riven is that Riven has like other cards that are that are supposed to be in the Riven shell, right? Like the other cards that reforge. That's fine. Um, and those cards, those cards are very underwhelming, and those cards are not very good. The other cards that they made, like I guess the best one is the three one that reforges, but you don't really want to be playing a, a two mana three one. Uh, with all of the one damage things everywhere. So that's not something you want. Um, so that one's pretty tough. And then the one two that, you know, force, you know, you ha it has to die before it, um, you know, before it reforges. That's not very, you know, it's a one two. That's not very good. And then, then you also have to have it die if your opponent doesn't help you have it die or anything. It's not going to be very good. And then two mana for just plus two plus zero is very underwhelming for just this turn before you reforge so the problem is, is with riven the the cards like the theme cards that go along with riven they're supposed to be designed to go along with riven they're all kind of unplayable they're all they're all very underpowered and that's kind of the biggest struggle with riven is you basically basically kind of have to whenever you play riven you don't really get to use any of those cards because they're not very good and so you just have um so you have Riven all on its own, and not with the other cards it's supposed to be with. And that's a problem. Yeah, so it's the shell's very underwhelming. Man, so that's that's them going down to three. I am surprised they're not blocking here, but so that's them going down to three. I can make it. I can make it. They go down to one if I cast Will of Ionia. I won't have Deny available at that point or Will of Ionia for next turn. But I could like bounce the this Stygian Onlooker. They go down to one. There there isn't any difference between three and one though. No, there's effectively no difference between 3 and 1. The reason to keep Will of Ionia would be like a card like Noxion Fervor. Have some defense against that. I don't necessarily need to have Yasuo alive. I think I hold off on it. Well, that card's not going to do anything for me now. And that's why I didn't play it. Because I still want to keep Decimate, or, you know, like, Deny for Decimate. Here's our chance. So that's the Nightfall card. That's a pretty good Nightfall card. Wanna see these moves up close? Oh, it's on. Oh, 
coming your own speed. All right, we got there. That was close. So if I would have cast the Will of Ionia before, I'm pretty sure we, yeah, we, we just lose. If I would have cast it and saved the Yasuo, we would have lost, right? Because then they would have been able to, yeah, because they would have had the combination of, because they had all three of those cards in hand of Fervor, because I was at four life. They had Fervor and the Deal One and the Drain One, the Unspeakable Horror, and the Doom Beast, right? Like not, so not even counting like the five three that they got, they have all those three cards. And so even... If I deny, I guess, so I could have denied, I guess I could have denied the, the fervor, and if I would have done that, then the Doom Beast deals two damage to me, the Unspeakable Horror deals one damage to me, so I'm at one, but then they, they would have also got the 5-3 Overwhelm, and I wouldn't have had, yeah, I wouldn't have had, you yeah, know, I would have drawn the Ravenous Flock for turn, so I would have taken one Overwhelm damage, so yeah, we would have lost. So if I would have played the Will of Ionia before, we would have lost. Yep. Yep. Yeah, even blocking... Yeah, so I would block the with the Yasuo, right? Because my Yasuo would be a 4-4. Four, four, but still, even there, we take one damage, right? Because it's a 5-3 Overwhelm, so we take one damage even with blocking with Yasuo. So we'd still take one damage and then add it to the one from the Unspeakable Horror and then the two from the Doom Beast. We would have taken four damage and we were at four. So yeah, we would have lost. Um, that was, yeah, that was a really good game. So that was, okay, so it started off really rough, right? Our first two losses weren't close at all. But we still ended up with a 3-2 and two record. We, we And the last three games were all very good games. Like, they were all close and interactive and back and forth. And um, our deck was impressive, you know, right? Like, our, our deck was stopping some good stuff from our opponents. All three of those games... That last one, not as much for my opponent's side. They didn't have a, a good, strong start for that deck. But they really uh, made up for it with a lot of Nexus damage and, like, the Brothers Bond and things like that to do a lot of damage. Um, so that was that was impressive. Those last three games, all of those last three games, we had Double Blade Twirler and we had Yasuo. And, like, all three of those games that we won, right? Like, so we had, we had Blade Twirlers, we had Yasuo, and a bunch of stun stuff. The two games that we lost, we had Yasuo and some stun stuff, but that was it. No Blade Twirlers, no House Spider, and so we just didn't play anything early. Um, so I think that that's kind of like the thing about this deck, kind of learning about this, is you you need like your Blade Twirlers and House Spiders early. If you don't have those, you're just going to be way too slow with having you know a curve this high of, of everything costing 4 plus mana. Um... And we also, yeah, we also didn't, we we played Karma a little bit the, again, the first of the three games, but the last two, the last two games we had no Karma. And, uh, you know, we were playing against aggro decks, all three of those last games also. And Karma is just not something you need against aggro, right? It's it's not a good card against aggro. It's just too expensive. You know, six mana, three health, it's just not good against aggro. And so um, we were drawing the other part of our deck that is good against aggro. And so that was good. Okay, but there we go. So that was a nice way to finish up our deck. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there and leave those comments. Feel free to do that. Um, let me know what you think of the deck or, or anything else. If you got other uh, cool decks you've been playing with Yasuo or if you've ever played Yasuo plus Karma together and have some good ideas with that, um, leave those comments. Let me know. I really would like to hear about other Yasuo Karma decks in here. All right, but that's all I got for this one. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.